In June 2007, Kafil Ahmed, an Indian Muslim engineer, studying in the UK, rammed his suicide car bomb into Glasgow Airport. It was the first suicide car bomb attack in Europe, and it could have killed hundreds. Glasgow Airport was not the only target. Police believe that Kafil Ahmed planted a car bomb outside this London club the previous night. Dan Weir is a young photographer and shot these pictures on the night of the attack. What did you see? Was there anything by the car? Yeah, there was a uh, patio gas cylinder, something like what we'd use for a patio heater or a barbecue of some sort. Yeah, so someone just ran it into here and then took off. Yeah. The patio gas was the base material for a fuel air bomb. A giant fireball that would have incinerated everyone standing outside the club. Peter Clark at New Scotland Yard is in charge of counterterrorism operations in the UK. Suicide terrorism is a very real threat. The only sensible assumption is that we will be attacked again. For Scotland Yard, the real problem is the isolated suicide bomber cell structure. Each cell can just log onto the internet for bomb making lessons and independently plan mass murder. In the CIA, we call it the strength of weak links. Even if you capture one cell, you still won't stop the next cell, the next suicide bombing. Like Kafil Ahmed, another set of bombers can appear from nowhere. The best way to counter suicide terrorism is to have the right intelligence. Uh, you could say that once a suicide terrorist has got up to out of bed to go and launch the attack, it's too late. In the CIA, the best intelligence always came from spies, hidden in the enemy's organization. The spies got paid. But how do you recruit spies within cells of would-be suicide bombers, people ready to blow themselves up to go to paradise? In the summer of 2005, two separate cells of suicide bombers attacked London. On the 7th of July, and on the 21st of July, the 7-7 attacks killed 52 people. Two weeks later, the 21-7 bombers planned another mass attack on the London Tube. But they failed, and after a manhunt, were arrested. As teenagers, the bombers, originally refugees from East Africa, had all been given sanctuary in the UK. But in their 20s, Mukhtar Saeed Ibrahim, Ramzi Mohammed, Yassin Omar, Hossein Osman, had turned into a suicidal enemy within. Two of the bombers had wives, children, but the others were adrift, moving aimlessly between casual jobs and cheap rented flats. Some of them were influenced by the notorious cleric Abu Hamza, but there was no real intelligence on them. This is Stockwell Green Mosque in London. One of the 21-7 bombers, Hussein Asman, tried to seize control here and use the mosque to promote his own hateful vision of Islam. What was your impression of them? Were they, were they intelligent? Were they committed? Did they understand Islam? Well, their understanding of Islam um, was nothing really. Uh, they were uh, a bunch of uh, very angry people. Um, they had very extreme views. What was their plan? Very simple. They, they had hatred towards uh, uh, the other community members who were not uh, listening to their ideology mm -hmm. or those people who were not in their camp. Despite this track of extremism, the 21-7 cell members slip below the police intelligence radar. Lost against a noisy background of too many suspects and no real information. In Ilford, on the outskirts of London. On Friday, 
24th of February, 2006, 17-year-old Mohammed Irfan Raja left home to join the Jihad and took a bus to Bradford. For months, Irfan had been secretly communicating by MSN Messenger and swapping jihadist videos on the internet with four British Asian students from Bradford University. Akbar Butt, 20. Awab Iqbal, 20. Usman Malik, 21. Eitzaz Zafar, 20. Irfan left a note for his parents, hidden under the mattress. If not in this world, we meet in Jannah, paradise. He warned his parents. P.S. Just in case you think I'm going to do something in this country, you can rest easy, I'm not. The conventional method of warfare is safer. On MSN, the students were in contact with Imran, a distant relation in Pakistan who acted as a controller, guiding the students in how to lie to police and immigration officials over their real intentions. I messed up when I tried to get into Iraq. I tried to do everything in one go. Keep the real intention hidden. We love to die as much as they love to live. There were no guns or bombs, but the cult of the suicide bomber was already drawing these young British men within its grasp. Safar idolized the September 11 hijackers. He even pasted his photo into an FBI montage of the hijackers. But how far away were these young British Asians from becoming another suicide bomber cell? Neil Doyle is an expert on jihadist websites on the internet. Tell me about this kid, Mohammed Raja. He was young, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, uh, he was very young and uh, self-radicalized in a quiet classic. So he sits at his computer. Why put this stuff on the internet? I mean, what's, what's the intended effect? To incite the viewer into actually participating in this. And also to convince them, yeah, you know, Muslims are being oppressed. If I got on a site now, theoretically, could I get instructions for all the components, make a bomb work? Well, I've watched people talking about uh, acetone peroxide, mm -hmm. the explosive use on 7-7 and they'd be getting advice back from people, presumably based in Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iraq. So the internet is, in a, in a sense, the university of terrorism. Absolutely, yeah, it's like a giant encyclopedia. For Raja, the internet was his doorway to jihad. In his farewell note to his parents, Raja smugly boasted of his imminent martyrdom and future glory. At such news, there are parents in the world that will phone their families and rejoice at the decision of their son. But far from being proud of Irfan's desire for martyrdom, his worried parents were horrified and called in the police. His jihad was over. All five were convicted under the Terrorism Act and sentenced up to three years in prison. The judge said they had crossed the line and become intoxicated by images of violent jihad. 